The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Jesus said, The kingdom of God is as if someone would scatter seed on the ground and would sleep and rise night and day, and the seed would sprout and grow. He does not know how. The earth produces of itself, first the stalk, then the head, then the full grain in the head. But when the grain is ripe, at once he goes in with his sickle because the harvest has come. He also said, with what can we compare the kingdom of God, or what parable will we use for it? It is like a mustard seed, which, when sown upon the ground, is the smallest of all the seeds on the earth. Yet when it is sown, it grows up and becomes the greatest of all shrubs, and puts forth large branches, so that the birds of the air can make nests in its shade. With many such parables, he spoke the word to them as they were able to hear it. He did not speak to them except in parables, but he explained everything in private to his disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning. I had this moment uh, last week, and then this morning it hit me hard. I'm, I'm 30 years ordained a deacon tomorrow, and I was trying to think of all the things that have changed uh, since then. I can name at least one. <laughs> so uh, one of the things that I, I am reflecting on as we approach these lessons, and as we uh, celebrated the life of Lorraine Shelters, who passed away this last week, and we had her funeral yesterday, is how death is with us in life, and particularly how we experience it in the sense of loss, but also in the sense of profound change. Because sometimes it is we lose someone that we love. We're going through a year anniversary of the passing of my mother and my sister in this uh, period of time, and my family and I are very aware of that. You may have your own losses that you're experiencing but also in the context of the transformation and change and really the small deaths that we experience in relationship with others in this life. Friendships that may decay and fall away, uh, work situations that may become untenable for us and we have to make a transition away from it to something new. There's all kinds of bits of death that attach to us and go with us. And it's important for us as Christians to realize that uh, though we may assert it from time to time, it's really important to affirm it and also to practice it that we can say that death is change and not an end. And that is something that sometimes is very hard for us because death in all its small forms and large carries with it a sense of finality. We can't go back again. We can't touch base again. We can't see that person again, at least not in this life which is lovely and poetical and homiletic, and you can hear preachers preach about it, but it's another thing to internalize it profoundly and deeply. I have a good friend who's going through challenges in his work life right now, and he's experiencing not only the death of relationships with regard to people he relates to in his work, but also the death of his expectations of the institution within which he's working and his own faith in himself. And these are all elements of what it means to die and rise again. So this line from Paul's letter, when he says, For the love of Christ urges us on, because we are convinced that one has died for all, therefore all have died, and he died for all, so that those who might live no longer for themselves, but for him who died and was raised for them. That's powerful stuff. The willingness to embrace a real and true death in order to experience life again. And to hold that not an abstraction, but in a deep and profound awareness of this is who we are as mortal beings. We experience the beginning, the middle, and the end of life experiences and of life itself. I was perusing social media today and uh, a friend of mine from long ago, this goes back to general seminary days, and then the early days that Laura and I were here in the Diocese of New Jersey, I knew him as a colleague, uh, he left the Episcopal priesthood, had joined the Baptist Church, and was doing financial advisement 
um, which was a family business. But uh, I still knew him as a colleague and friend in ministry. And I found out that he'd passed away in early May. Didn't know about it. He had a heart attack. And so I am in the midst of feeling the feelings that you get when you hear about the passing of a friend. And it's in the wake of their passing. So you really can't even reach out and touch um, touch base with folks because that time of mourning your first experience of that separation and their continued journey with it might not be in congruence. I wouldn't want to create an imposition when they might just be getting to the place where they were able to accept his passing to say, oh, I'm so sorry to hear. I fear that that might refresh it. Because again, this is that moment when we struggle with what it means to embrace the death and the dying and then to rise again to understand that we are here in the midst of this journey. The other side of this is also a member of our family passed away recently. He was a very modest man and he didn't really like to uh, be the center of the spotlight. So us even knowing about his journey towards his passing was kind of this walled off piece of knowledge. So we could send our good intentions but we really couldn't reach out to him because that wasn't where he was comfortable. Think of all the ways that we struggle with this in our lives. In the midst of this struggle, we also get this incredible word of hope from Christ. And I'm holding on to it with both hands and all my heart. The kingdom of God, he says, is like someone who goes out and sows seed in a field. And the sun rises and sets and it rains and the wind blows. And somehow, he knows not how, because he never took earth science in middle school. The seed sprouts and grows, becomes a stalk, and then the head, and then there's grain, and then the grain is ready to be harvested, and he goes out with his sickle and gathers it in, and there is a harvest and people are fed. And this happens again and again. But those who are imaginatively involved in his teaching, those who were so close to that pure activity of sowing and growing and reaping and gathering in, they're very aware that there are so many variables that go into what makes a harvest happen. What makes a good harvest, a poor one? What causes a harvest to be fruitful? What causes one to fail? And it happens season after season and year after year. And we continue to grow in wisdom when we can see that now in New Jersey, though we had a wet and cold spring, it's starting to heat up. And you know as well as I do that what was verdant and green a short time ago is probably going to move towards a balance of drought. Laura and I were just remarking, we're going to have to get out and water the garden if we want to keep our harvest. There's so much that is asked of us in this life of faith not simply to accept things as they are, but to see the full tapestry engagement of what it means to walk the long path with God and to be with God in season after season, to experience both the gift of birth and life and death, and then to celebrate that fully and completely, knowing that we are being folded into that beautiful image that Christ presents of the kingdom of God. So that even the smallest of seeds planted, that mustard seed becomes the greatest of plants. Where even the birds of the air can linger and make their nests. We just have to do one thing. And God reminds Samuel of this in this moment as he mourns for Saul. When it comes to embracing the understanding of what it means to be dead and die and rise to new life in God... We have to be willing to let go of our expectations of what life should really look like. What this journey should be. And to render ourselves utterly and completely open to what God is doing in our midst. What God is doing in the other. And what God is seeking to accomplish in and through us. I'm so astoundingly grateful and humbled to be able to walk for 30 years as a servant at the table of God. And to look forward to next year when I get to celebrate 30 years as a priest in the church of God. But to stand here and to understand that I've been given the honor of setting the table for the family to gather for all this time. And to see you all grow as you are planted in Christ. 
and you especially, Benny, <laughs> that we continue to walk in that grace. May God continue us to bless us in the years and the growing seasons to come. And with every harvest we embrace together. Amen. Amen.